Hi, welcome to the Interaxis YouTube channel and Interaxis.io. Uh, today I want to go into a topic about lending, and specifically this is about lending in the decentralized world. Uh, there have been a lot of people trying to tackle it. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be part of a group, uh, some, I don't know, we call ourselves, I think now the Under Collateralized Alliance or something like that, but what we're trying to tackle is the whole issue of how, uh, how is lending going to work um, in, in a decentralized way, in a DeFi way, um, to, to have it still be safe and secure and, and have it be addressed for all these different purposes. And it started out with a, just a discussion of can we get under collateralized lending? So where did that even start? Well, uh, as, as many of you may know, whether you've watched our videos or, or you've been online on, on Twitter or, or Telegram, what have you, uh, for the most part, if you're getting a loan in the crypto space, in the decentralized space, and we're trying to make it decentralized, right? You generally have to put up like 150 to, well, we'll, we'll say this, 115 to 150 percent collateral, and that's usually in ETH or some other crypto. And why is that? Because we're trying to do this in a decentralized way. We're trying to do this in a trustless way, uh, and and in doing that. Um, I have to be able to, if, if I'm lending you money and you're giving me crypto as collateral, some sort of cryptocurrency, that's awesome because what it means is, let's say ETH is worth $200 today. Now I might take, uh, I, I might lend you $150. So I give you $150 or 150 die, we'll call it, and you are pledging the two hundred dollars as as or the two hundred or the the one ETH sorry, one ETH which is worth two hundred dollars as collateral. Now I'm willing to do that because I'm going to take this ETH, I'm going to wrap it in a smart contract, right, with with this loan to you, and as you pay me back, a, you know, certain amounts, I can unlock a little bit of this ETH, ETH from the collateral. And if you don't pay me back because this is wrapped in a smart contract, I just say it wasn't paid back. Bam! I take your ETH because this is all digital and on chain. That can be done. That's one of the promises of DeFi. That, that that's what's so cool about it is so much of this can be wrapped in smart contracts and done on 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 chain um, to the point that I don't have to have that level of trust in you. All I'm trusting is the fact that you have this asset. I see you have this asset. You've wrapped it in a smart contract. There's no denying it. There's no way around it that if you don't pay me back, I'm going to take your asset. Right? The problem is because we're using ETH or other crypto, they're volatile, right? So this 200, if this drops to 150, all of a sudden I only have $150 worth of collateral for your $150 loan. And at that point you might go, well, you know what? I think ETH is going to go to 125. And therefore, I'm not even going to worry about paying you back. You can have my ETH. I'd rather have, I'd rather have the money, right? And I've probably generated the smart contract to say, okay, if, if the value of ETH gets to 150, just liquidate the contract, give me the ETH, and and we're done. Anyway, to, all that to say, the way this group started was trying to figure out how can we make this not 150 percent collateralized, not not so much collateral that I have to put up. And this uh, took us in all different directions of discussing uh, debt, uh, the, the credit markets and such, because in the, in the traditional finance world, this is by far um, the, the biggest market, right? There is so much more debt issued in the world than equity. This is what actually makes the world go round. Uh, from a financial perspective, it's the fact that if I don't actually have money to do something that I need to do, if I don't have the cash, I can go borrow it from someone who does. That someone, a lot, most of the time, is some sort of bank or, or company who is in the business of lending money, and and they usually need some sort of collateral, right? So you have the true uncollateralized loans, which, which there aren't very many of. This is usually something like credit cards, okay? Credit cards here here in the U.S. and, and elsewhere, credit cards. Um, are are relatively under un, sorry relatively uncollateralized because of that they have very high interest rates right um, but when you really think about it the collateral they're using is my reputation it's my ability to uh, have access to the credit markets later uh, later in my life right and because of that they look at you know here in the states they look at my FICO score some sort of credit 
score. So really the collateral is my reputation because what they're saying is if you don't pay back the interest, if you don't pay back this, this credit card, we're going to hit your credit score. And if your credit score starts going down, then you won't have access to more credit. You won't have access to more debt. Like if you need to go buy a car and you don't happen to have the money to put down to, to just buy the car outright for cash, you're going to have to get a loan for it and it's going to cost you more because we're going to hit your credit score. This is the one thing really that the credit card companies can hit you hard on and, and hurt you, right? And it's the one, really the one place where we have completely um, uncollateralized and that there's no physical asset collateralizing this, but they're using my reputation essentially as collateral for the loan. Now you also have un, uh, under collateralized, which is really what we, we want to solve. So what we started to, to look at, what, what we've really investigated is um, what else can we use as collateral? Because the problem is, for instance, I go get a mortgage, right? If, if, I, if I get a mortgage, which by the way is an over collateralized loan because the, the, I don't usually put 100% into the mortgage, right? I, I usually have to put 20% down when I buy my house. Um, and then the rest of it, the 80% is the mortgage, but the bank kind of has a lien on the whole house, right? And the house is worth more usually than the, the mortgage is for. However, when I have a, a mortgage and my house, and, and I'm collateralizing my house, um, the bank can seize it, you know, take my house. They can foreclose on my house if I don't make my payments eventually, right? So also, if I don't pay my property taxes, um, the, the county can come take my house. They can foreclose on my house. There's a process for that. Now, in the, um, in the DeFi world, it, we're talking about internationally, it's really hard for me to collateralize my house because there's certain rules that go along with owning my home, right? I can't necessarily put, put my deed to my house on chain and transfer it to someone internationally who's giving me a loan and say, okay, you, you know what? I'm going to collateralize my house. You get a, you get my, all of my house, if I don't pay the loan, they might go, okay, how am I going to collect? Where, where's the enforcement, right? So we have a lot of issues to work through in terms of under or uncollateralized loans. What we also have to work out is what is the purpose of this loan? Am I buying something? Is this for a business? Um, so, so is it personal? Is it for business? If it's for business, is this like working capital? Right? Am I factoring invoices just to, to pay bills every month? Um, is it to buy equipment? Is it to, um, I don't know, buy a, a real estate or a building? Okay, so you can see there are all these different ways. There, there's trade finance, right, which says you're just going to give me 30-day terms or 60-day terms or 90-day terms. Well, that, that's part of credit. That's part of, of lending. I'm lending you money. If you buy supplies from me for a construction project and I say you don't have to pay me for 30 or 60 or 90 days, I'm essentially lending you money. I'm giving you supplies and I'm trusting that you're going to pay me. Now, if you've used those supplies in a building and you don't pay me, what am I going to collect? I can't go collect the supplies now. They've actually been used. I can't go pull them out of the building. So I have to find some other ways to collect. I have to have some other way to score you as a credit risk and such. There's, there's credit scores. There's FICO scores. Uh, there's looking at the business, the invoices, and everything else. So what we're trying to figure out in this decentralized world of, of this trustless society where I want to be able to, to issue loans to people I don't necessarily know very well for instance, what, what am I going to use as collateral? How am I going to score you? What is your identity? How are we going to keep people from creating a thousand different fake identities and, and trying to get loans for them? We're, we're trying to address all these, and this video is kind of to say there are a lot of issues out there. So what all are we, are we tackling now? Uh, in the realm of of, let's say, collateral. Okay, collateral is a whole issue on its own because what we want to see is how can we take other assets and make them some sort of uh, collateral.
what's potential collateral? We've already seen uh, someone, uh, Alex Mazmej, and, and I'll, I'll link to him, but he's created this rocket bank where he takes NFTs, non-fungible tokens, which I'll have another video about, and uses those as collateral for, for small loans, and they're trying to create this project where, where they do this. Um, what else could be collateral? You could have you know, assets that are tokenized, for instance, which is a, a you know a form of NFT. So, if you're part, for instance, of some of these real estate funds that have actually raised raised money and issued security tokens, eventually those can be utilized as collateral. Uh, what about income streams? Right, income streams, something like Sable, or like if you're getting paid an income stream and it's all on chain. If you're getting paid income that way, if you maybe have some sort of uh, tokens that are paying you interest. So if you have CDI or, or something like that, maybe you can tokenize the interest from that or maybe you can tokenize those tokens um, and, and you can somehow change the income stream to, to the collateral that uh, therefore pays your loan. Eventually we, we want to have other um, assets that are tokenized. So maybe uh, I can tokenize um, Maybe real estate, that one's going to be kind of a hard one because transferring deed and title and all that to real estate is kind of difficult. I think tokenizing income, whether it's income from work or income from ownership of some sort of uh, ownership of, of some sort of token or some sort of investment uh, will end up being a big one. Um, but really what we need to find out is, is what else are we going to be able to, to collateralize that, to say if I don't pay this loan back, here's what you get. And then we have to determine, we have to put a valuation on those. Is there going to be a central or a decentralized manner of creating a valuation uh, system for these different tokens so we can understand what they're worth and therefore the, the collateral we can place on them? So that's kind of the collateral aspect of lending on chain. All right, then we potentially have that, that and, you know, some other groups are working on in here is identity and scoring. Pen's starting to lose it. Uh, identity and scoring, right? So it's, it's can you, can you give people you know, one on-chain identity. And there are groups trying to do this, like uh, Three Box, Civic, uh, Bright ID are, are a few. I know Hydro Protocol is working on it, and, and, and I'll link to some of those. But can I give people one chain, one on-chain identification or several on-chain IDs, but, but I know who they're linked to? And these could potentially be linked to social profiles, uh, they could be linked to uh, history, payment history, or lending history. All these can be um, part of it. But on-chain identity is really hard because some people are trying to solve on-chain identity like in this global aspect where you go, look, this identity is, is for like your passport, your travel, and your voting, and your, your lending and your DeFi um, interactions. Or is this identity and scoring going to be just for lending or just for DeFi and are going to have separate for others? The problem is, since this is all programmatic and on-chain, is can I, there, there are people who might programmatically try to game the system and go, I'm going to create a thousand different fake identities, borrow you know, $100 with each one of them so it seems like a small amount, and then never pay back, and I get $100,000 to, to walk away with, and, and it was all fake anyway. So we're, that, that's a big deal we're trying to target, um, because in the traditional finance world, usually you have to physically fill out applications. You have to do KYC, AML, and, and all these things where you prove who you are. And now we, we're going to have to somehow prove who people are without uh, and, and trying to get around some of the KYC a, AML stuff. Now, some of that is regulation, and there's just not going to be any way around it if you live in, in certain places. Um, but a lot of it we're, you know, we're, we're trying to uh, attack, trying to figure it out somehow. Is there some way I can get you an identity on chain um, without having to get all, a lot of your pertinent information like social security number, or driver's license number, or, or something? And, and that's actually proving to be pretty difficult, but there are definitely some teams tackling that. So we have identity, we have collateralization, uh, some sort of scoring mechanism. 
right? So I, I, I had kind of created those as, as one topic, but it's really two different topics, right? So there's identity, then there's scoring. So in terms of scoring, it's, all right, how do we rank you? How do we rate you um, in terms of your lending history or your borrowing history? And have you been repaying things? And then do we give you some sort of score based on how you've done? And based on that score, you can borrow more uh, later on. The problem with that is you can, what we've seen from a gaming perspective, gaming theory perspective, is you can create the, the, the identity, build up your your score over time by borrowing and repaying and borrowing and repaying, and then you you finally borrow you know $100,000 because you built your score up that much, and then you don't pay that one back. And that's kind of the end one. And, and the reason why we're worried about this is because now if we're trying to do this in a trustless way, um, you, people can programmatically create all this. Whereas in the past, if you had to physically fill out applications or, or show up at the bank or meet with someone, you couldn't do that in the past. Now, maybe you can. So scoring is going to be an issue. How do we score you? And are you scored differently? Or, or, or do we just keep track of all your attributes? We just keep track of your history on chain. And then every organization, every underwriter, these are all the underwriters, they can decide, they can create their own scoring system and go, oh, well, we're only looking for people who have a certain, who, who hit certain attributes. So we just have, you just have to keep track of the history on chain and then let everyone, all these underwriters uh, have, have the information and they can score it how they want. So this will be interesting in, in that if I have some sort of token, I talked about NFTs earlier, if I have some sort of token that I have in my wallet, right, and so then let, let's say I have a, this token that tracks all my borrowing history, right, and it has all my loans, it might have all my income that, that I actually make. These are all, this is all pertinent information I'd want to tell people if I want to borrow money. It might have all my assets, uh, it might have all my social profiles here, and the cool part would be if I want to borrow money, and let's say it's a, it's a smaller amount, and whoever the underwriter is here says, okay, well, for that smaller amount, um, all we need to see is your, your loan history and your social profiles, and we're good. We don't need it all. So I can just choose, okay, only share this information and this information, and maybe we do some sort of zero knowledge proof where they don't actually know me. Like I'm not giving them my real information, or, or they can just see that I have these, but they don't necessarily know who I am, right? All they have to see is that I have these and they're pertinent, but they don't necessarily have to know me, but then if I don't repay, now they get to see who I am and, and either um, and, and maybe you know go to my social profile and say, hey, this guy Adam didn't pay us back. We just want everyone to know that. Okay, so so that can be an issue. So we've talked about um, a little bit about identity scoring, uh, all the different aspects we can use as collateral, um, and all this kind of comes back to uh, enforcement. Right, because enforcement is going to be a big one. And with enforcement, I, I apologize for the handwriting, with enforcement, some of the problems you have are going to be regulations, right? Is this being enforced? Enforcement meaning if you don't pay me back, what do I get? Or what do I get to do? Do I get to seize the assets that you placed in a smart contract? Well, that's the easiest way to do it, right? Do I get to seize your income? Well, what impact is that going to have? What, what tax implications is that going to have? Where is the enforcement if you, if you put up real estate or property as collateral? What do I get to own? Um, and, and we have to make sure from a token perspective, you put up a real estate token as collateral, are you actually able to transfer ownership of that token? Is that even available? From a regulatory perspective, am I able to enforce this loan in your jurisdiction, in the jurisdiction where you live. I mean, if you if you put up your house as collateral, can I actually go take your house? Is, is there a, a way for me to do that? So enforcement is, is going to be a little difficult, and that's kind of the reason why we have such high collateral requ requirements right now, because um, the only thing we can collateralize that's easy to enforce are crypto assets, right? On-chain assets are, are really the only thing that, that's easy to enforce. So as we move towards different types of, of 
lending and collateralization and, and debt, we have to figure out what are what is the enforcement going to look like? How are we going to enforce um, loans? How are we going to enforce repayment? Um, th but the nice thing about it being on chain is, let's say I am able to put up a um, my income kind of as collateral, right? Let's say I'm getting streamed income or something, and I can put up that income as, as collateral. Um, then maybe we, we have it to where part of my income goes for repayment and part goes to me, right? And I say, look, I, I need to be able to pay my bills. Here's how much I need to pay my bills. The rest of it I can earmark towards repaying you. And since I'm probably getting paid you know, to, to a, a token or a, or a wallet or something, that, that's actually relatively easy to do. So enforcement's going to be a big one. And, and the interesting thing in going down this kind of DeFi lending rabbit hole with all these incredibly smart people is we have people that are that are heavy on the crypto side, on the programming side, heavy on the finance side, lending people that have been in lending for a while and they get to come in and say, um, that's great that you guys have these ideas and you want to do it, but here's why we don't think it'll work or here's what's been tried in the past and, and um, hasn't worked. There are a lot of people coming in with great uh, protocols and great ideas, being able to kind of uh, syndicate loans or being able to give give individuals the opportunity to be the underwriters, right? So it's like if there were money coming into a uh, this lending pool, right? And then it can be divvied out to an underwriter here, and this person is making smaller loans, right? So, so if, you know, let's say $100,000 comes into this lending pool and, you know, 25000 goes to this underwriter to make loans, we can track how this underwriter does. This underwriter can do it, can, can decide how these um, loans are going to be made and based on their performance, this pool can give this underwriter more money to, to lend out because this person can be close. I mean, these can be um, farmers in a village, so this can be some sort of farming co-op. Um, this can be people in a particular industry, right? So this can be uh, people, uh, you know, again, in the farming industry, the construction industry, uh, some sort of small business. This can be people that, you know, sell goods on Amazon and they just need working capital loans. It could be any sort of underwriters uh, that, that are going to create these loans and they're going to do their work and they might figure out that, look, we, we already know all the people in our community who need loans, so we're going to lend out the money and we're able to track this in a programmatic way and track the performance of this underwriter and based on that decide whether to, to give them more money. And there are people creating these protocols to, to basically give the underwriters the ability and then, and then fold this up to a lending pool or sell a bond against it or, or something like that. And it, it's really interesting and cool. It's just in this world, in the decentralized world, trying to create this trustless financial ecosystem it gets really difficult because from a programmatic perspective, it's much easier to game the system. It's much easier to create fake people, create fake identities. So we have to figure out identity, collateralization, um, scoring, uh, what else did I talk about? Enforcement. All these are, are parts of it. And then everyone's going to figure out where they fit in. Am I, am I doing some sort of... Um, collateralized financing? Am I financing things like cars and real estate? Am I financing working capital and therefore I'm going to have to see proof of income for your business? Uh, am, I, am I doing um, trade finance where I'm selling you goods and I'm getting paid 30, 60, or 90 days down, in, in which case um, there's some other sort of credit scoring. I just have to know you and we're just going to put everything on chain and I'm going to accept stable coins or, or what have you. What's the enforcement of that look like? Um, so it's all really interesting things that in a traditional finance system took decades to build and we're trying to force it all into like a couple years of DeFi building without going so far that we, we bring down the whole DeFi system because we created this great lending opportunity um, that, that grew and now one person gained the system and took all the money out of, out of the smart contract or something. That's what we're trying to avoid. Um, but in this case, we have some really, uh, really smart people thinking about 
and working through these problems, but I just want to talk about it as kind of my own stream of consciousness, getting it out of my head and sharing it with you all to see where we're, we're looking. Uh, we'll have some more videos, we'll have some more explanations of some of the protocols we're talking about, how to interact with them, how to work with them soon up on our, on our member site. Um, but I want to talk about lending in the decentralized world because it's an area that I've been in for, for several months by virtue of being in this under collateralized Telegram group and, and Discord group and discussing it with people. And I think when we got it started, we didn't realize how big it could become and how many different aspects we had to work on almost separately because there's so many different goals in under collateralized or uncollateralized or de decentralized lending. So anyway, I wanted to talk, get this off my chest a little bit about uh, decentralized lending or, or DeFi lending or under collateralized lending, whatever you want to call it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit us at interaxis.io, email is info at interaxis.io, at interaxis8 on Twitter. Hope to see you in the next video.